In this video, we're going to take a look at iOS XR, very basics of it. First of all, let's take a look at how to assign an IPv4 address in iOS XR. We're going to go under the interface gig0002. And remember in iOS XR, it is IPv4 address, not IP address. So in this case, we're going to assign IP address of 10.10.10.1 10, 10, 10, slash 24. Ensure that in XR you commit the config without committing the config. They are not written to the startup config and do not take effect. That's the difference between iOS and XR. Next, let's take a look at how to assign a static route in iOS XR. First of all, we're going to enable a routing process. We're going to go under address family IPv4 unicast and assign a static default to point at next stop of 10 10 10 2. We commit the config. Now let's take a look at the routing process in the running config for the static route. We see that the routing process is different than a normal iOS. It's under a routing process called static and we define the address family first, which is IPv4 unicast, and then set a static default to point at the next stop of 10, 10, 10, 2. To take a look at the routing table, we can run the same command that we use in iOS, which is show route static. And the output is very similar to iOS and where we see that a next stop 10, 10, 10, 2 is set for the default and that's in the routing table. In the next task, we're going to look at how to enable OSPF in XR. In this topology, we've got PE1, PE2 directly connected over the interface gig 0001. In this case, we're going to enable OSPF for IPv4 in the area zero. Both PE1 and PE2 are running iOS XR and they're directly connected. The loopback IP addresses are set to 10.0.0.1 and 10.0.0.4. Now let's take a look at how to configure OSPF in XR on the CLI. First, we're going to configure on PE1. We're going to go under the routing process of OSPF. In this case, it's 100. We're going to set a router ID first, which is the loopback IP address of the PE1. We're going to enable address family IPv4 unicast and set the area to zero. Next, we're going to enable the connected interface under area zero. For the reachability purpose, we're also going to enable loopback interface and ensure that the connected interface is set as point to point. The loopback should be passive. We commit the config. Now let's take a look at the running config of OSPF. The hierarchy is slightly different than iOS and iOS XE. We, saw, we see that a router OSPF 100 is enabled. Here the difference is that address family IPv4 unicast is enabled first. Then area 0 is set. Followed by that we enable both the connected interface and the loopback 0 in the OSPF process. Now repeat the same process for the PE2 we're going to go into routing process of 100. We're going to go under address family IPv4 unicast, set the area to zero. Interface, connected interface, gig 0001. Network type point to point. And for reachability, we're going to enable OSPF for the loopback zero, ensure that is passive and commit the config. Similarly, take a look at the running config for the routing process. 
Next, uh, just take a look at the OSPF adjacencies um, and we're going to use show OSPF neighbor command. Now to take a look at the routes, we're going to run show OSPF routes and a show route OSPF. Both commands give us slightly different output. Um, so first of all, let's take a look at the show OSPF route command. Uh, we see that the prefix 10.0.0.1.32 is directly connected interface of the loopback 0. And prefix of 10.0.0.4.32 is the loopback IP address of PE2 in this diagram. And we see that the loopback IP of 10.0.0.4 of PE2 is known to us via directly connected interface gig 001. And when we take a look at show route OSPF, we see that the loopback of the PE is known to us via the directly connected interface. Now just take a look, see if we can reach the loopback interface. Yes, we can. Thank you very much.